today. Welcome to Keta. Thank you so much. The beautiful region of Volta. I love it already. How are you feeling? I mean, I'm feeling so good to be here, and um, I wish I can try and buy a house in here, you know, just to join the Keta family. So, Mr. Ghana Baby was actually, I was not the one who came about with that name. Mm. So, I traveled from uh, Ghana to China. When I went to China, you see, right now you can say I have a little beard, but back in the days, I had no beard. And let me tell you something, I used Emirates to go to China for the first time. As soon as I arrived in Dubai, they look at me and they're like, you don't qualify to travel alone. Where are your mom and dad? <laughs> so, they detained me for like eight hours making sure that I'm qualified and they check my passport. Ah, this guy is 18 years old. How can he travel by himself? Then when I go to China, everybody looked at me and like, yo, you look like a baby, man. And my roommate was um, somewhere around 33 years old. So, if, and he is also from Ghana and then they started calling him Ghana Papa. So if he's called Ghana Papa, then I need to be called Ghana baby, man. Wonderful. <laughs> What I'm doing right now, what really inspires me to do what I do right now is because I feel like there's so many negativity when it comes to the name Africa. To the extent that Africans themselves don't even embrace that, okay, I'm a proud African. Trust me, when I was in China, I had to lie that I'm from America before I get a job. I had to, I mean, hide where I'm coming from just to, I mean, even date a woman. You get me? So it was more of um, whenever you hear the name Africa, it's full of negativity. And I told myself that, is there any way we can change that? So I check on the internet just to look for videos about Africa. And I'm not seeing anyone doing it. It's just pictures. Oh, the beautiful South Africa you don't see. The beautiful Ghana. They put all of them together. And that's why a lot of people thought that Africa is just a country. So I'm a guy who always want to see solutions instead of always complaining and complaining. So I realized that, you know what, somebody needs to fill the gap. I was an aeronautical engineer. I put my tools down and I'm like, you know what, I need to go on a journey to change the narratives of Africa. Let the world know that Africa is a beautiful place. Let Africans know that Africa is what we have. Let the world know that being an African is a blessing. So, I mean... I've been doing this for the past three years and I wish I knew earlier because the impact has been amazing. I've seen Africans all over the world coming back home to invest in Africa just because of a video that I did. I met a woman in, um, I think three days ago before I got here, she's 73 years old. As soon as she saw me, she started crying and said, can I hug you? I wanted to shake her hand and said, no, can I hug you? She hugged me and said, for 54 years of her life, she has always wanted to visit Africa, but she was scared just because of what he has been seeing on the media. And two years of discovering my channel, all she did was to buy one-way ticket and she found herself in Ghana. So we, this is very important and it's very necessary that we promote Africa as African. I feel like young Africans don't have people that they look up to. And you know, we are living in a society where somebody who has made it in life in Africa are not celebrated. We always think about, oh, this man built his wealth out of, I mean, he was a politician or maybe he stole money. But don't forget that everything starts from scratch to where, to where they are. And the man who owns Casa Preco, this is a man that needs to be profiled so that some of us can look up to such person and be like, you know what, if this man has done it, me. Sitting here as Wadamaya, I can do it in future. We don't have stuffs like that. So that's why when I started introducing the entrepreneurship episode, I felt like I can't do everything by myself. We need more Africans to meet Africans that are into what? Um, agriculture. I mean, go to one farm after the other. Promote farmers. Let us know, is it possible for us to invest our money into agriculture? See, I, I was so happy today when I went to a farm that is owned by um, someone from Volta region. And I live in Accra. I didn't even know that something like this exists in here. So the more we talk about these things, the more a lot of people get to know. I also told them that, you know, you need, it's time for us to involve in tech. You see, we always have the mindset of going to school, coming out after graduation, go buy a house, marry, give birth, sit in a bank. And that's it. But don't forget that you sitting down there have a lot of things that you can achieve or have a lot of things that you can do. And that is why we need somebody in the tech space. We love the entertainment more than anything. 
we love to talk because you know africans always um, love to embrace negativity let me just put it this way we know we consume more gossips we consume more okay this person has done this more of entertainment industry but can we get to have something that opens our mindset can we have something that you will sit in your room and you feel like you know what i'm going out there to start that business this is what no one is teaching us and we as vloggers need to know that this is our duty and i'm telling you that everyone can be a vlogger it's not about i'm an engineer what am i doing in a vlogging space even people think that being a vlogger means you're a school dropout no i i have a first class degree i can't just decide to be in my field but i feel like somebody needs to fill this gap and we need more people i don't know what is your hobby what do you enjoy doing bring it on board if listen i wish i have time to take people through on how you can actually build a career out of your own career so being a doctor you can still be a doctor go to a hospital during your free time come home pick up a camera and then teach people i mean what you what you've been doing in the hospital but online the guy sitting behind me is a jamaican and all he does is to travel and eat so he's in keta to eat food put it on camera and that's it but let me ask you a question an african tell an african that yo pick up a camera go to takrade go and eat and then put it on camera uh, what will a mother tell you uh, on the table me when i wanted to be a vlogger my mom was crying like, ah, I took you to school to become an engineer. What are you doing? My mom was crying. To the extent that I had to sign a contract with my mom just to do what I do. But we are trying to change it. I'm trying to let people know that you can be a doctor, you can be an engineer, but whatever you know, bring your hobby on the internet so that you can inspire a lot of Africans. Me, my job in here is to inspire a lot of Africans to go out there and be great not just being in a circle because we don't have anybody to look up to. We might have the best journalists in the country. Maybe you, you also want to be a journalist. Why? Because you saw that guy. But can we start promoting farmers? For you to know that I also want to be a farmer. Can we start promoting fishermen? I met a guy yesterday, also in Sogakope. A guy owns the biggest tilapia in the entire Ghana. And can you believe the money he makes in a day? But if you see a fisherman, you laugh at him. But he's a guy who is making millions, bro. Millions. And he saw the opportunity. Africans were not grabbing it. He was working in Nestle for 10 years. He decided to quit. His, the fishing that he's doing has nothing to do with it. He just went to a place to go get a fish. And the man mistreated him. And he's like, yo, you this white man, I will show you that Africans are capable. And that's it. He owns the biggest tilapia farm in Sogakope. So this is what I'm advocating for. It's tough, but nothing will stop me from doing what I do. It's tough.